Well, I'll read a few. They're very short, and they're kind of just to be fragments of things I'm starting, but I wrote a few today. Um, first one's kind of a love poem. Six feet apart, six feet apart, you have my heart. Without the touch that means so much, our thoughts must meet, still be discreet. Platonic love is all we have now. Without, without a need to break a vow now. <laughs> That's the first one. Second one is COVID-19. Uh, this unseen silent enemy doesn't require a cloak of darkness, camouflage uniform, or submarine. It lingers in the very air we breathe, stalks us in broad daylight, frightens some into madness. This menacing phantom strikes at random, the weak, the strong, the young, the old, the, fe- the foolish, wise, the meek, the bold, a serial killer by any definition, toying with our human condition. And mm. this is the next one that I just started on a while ago, about 5 o'clock, where I got three more phone calls. I'm not finished with this one. The Live Poet Society. Our meeting is almost a secret liaison. Though relative strangers, we attempt to connect our minds and ideas through space. We unlock small, hidden compartments of our spiritual selves in order to share with those we know will understand or at least try to understand. That's great. That one I just started like, on a while ago. I like the third one. The third yeah. one is my the favorite. Last one. I, mean, I hope you continue oh, with it. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Well, I was thinking of the Dead Poet Society, and uh, there's so much imagery one can draw from this whole COVID thing, and I haven't even written about my nursing home hospital experience. That was funny and sad, but mm-hmm. I haven't, I didn't get into it. I wasn't sure I'd even be able to connect up, but Tracy always inspires me to, to write. Uh, mm-hmm. I miss the workshops, but uh, anyway, thank you, Paul. You're always a positive, you draw up a positive image. You know, we're, I'm just a disembodied voice speaking. <laughs> I feel like, yes, but I like we're in your, this. I can see your face, Melanie. <laughs> yeah, I can hear your sonorous voice waving. I can hear laughter. I can't smell Tracy's perfume or eat the chocolate or drink the water and the snacks. But <laughs> we're still here in mind, if nothing else. There's a poem right there. Yeah, but we're we're together. Well, I put um, because, perfume on today for the first time in a while, actually. So, oh, what is it? Tell me, I can smell it if you told me. <laughs> it's um, it's bergamot and um, a cream, uh, a fresh cream. Ooh, I, I like, like the smell of bergamot. Yeah. Uh, I smell yeah. like a cup of tea. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. See, I'm I'm like multi sensory person, so uh, I try to use all my senses. But I still have to write about all my experiences in the nursing home, and <laughs> it was really bad. Good and bad, both things. The hospital, good and bad, mainly bad, but not bad. Not all bad. There were a few elements of good and and a lot of a lot of pain and a lot of humor, and just watching how people react to different things. So uh, that's all I'm going to say for now, and I want someone else to read some poems. Uh, Nadine, would you like to go next? Okay. I actually wrote two poems on um, the coronavirus, and uh, I'll just read the first one, and then if somebody else wants to go, I'll read the other one later. Um, It's called The Visitor. An unwelcome visitor has come to town. How long it will be around, no one knows. It's wreaking havoc day and night. In a battle, we have no weapons to fight. Unprecedented time says the world on lockdown, searching, looking for an answer to be found. Unprecedented times like never before, looking to leaders and they don't know. The whole world is affected, gripped in fear, violence and killing breaking out everywhere. The people aren't hearing what they want to hear. Coronavirus, COVID-19, has changed our world. Pain and suffering, mourning, crying, death and dying. The numbers are staggering. It's taking a toll. The economy is suffering from Corona's hold. 
The future seems uncertain. Survival is in question. How will we live from day to day? When will the visitor go away? Oh, I like that. Yes. I like that, Nadine. Thank Very. You. Yeah. yeah. Well done. Thank A you. lot of imagery. Really tells the story of our times right now. Oh yeah. It does. It really does. It's a, everything is like topsy turvy. Yeah. And strange I things. Better. I'd say, and you kept it unpolitical. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> <a good point. laughs> oh, we have too much political stuff as it is. Yes, that's, that's good. Oh, I do have something political. <laughs> I didn't get the memo. Nadine, we'd be disappointed if you didn't. <laughs> I've, I've been in trouble for doing that kind of thing. <laughs> I've gotten in trouble at poetry meetings <laughs> for being too political. I'm shaking my but finger at you, Melanie. <laughs> yeah, I've already written those limericks and then the other other stuff. You know my you know my feelings, but I won't say anything one way or the other. Thousand candles light my heart as I welcome my prince, the blood of nobility, the morals of a saint. I'm blessed in life to have loved your soul the eyes with such wisdom, the face with such innocence, the evolved soul of purity, your knowledge amazes me, your morals delight me, you bring so much peace to my shattered heart. Whatever you do, you strive for best, no matter how lost you find your way. Your desire to serve humanity will lead you to your highest. Your wisdom will guide you to achieve your best. I feel blessed. Angels watch over you. You're the man I can proudly call my own. Wow. That was beautiful. Thank you. Well, yes. might, might some of us live to be worthy of that praise? <laughs> well, thank you. Is that a is that a form poem, Jyoti, or just a poem for like a free verse? What you wrote? A free verse. I wrote this for my son, and maybe that's why. I mean, just very close to my heart. This poem. Mm -hmm. And if I recall correctly, that was your submission this year and a winner, correct, for the poetry contest? Right. Yes. That's why I thought I would share it. <laughs> Wonderful. Shall I go next? I, I, I found an, a not so dire part of, of what I was writing earlier, so I'll, I'll see how it goes. Um, there is no end in sight. The days fall away like autumn leaves. I remind myself that wearing pajamas all day is okay. The new normal, staying home, taking stock, ordering our groceries, necessi necessities online for shipping, delivery, or pickup. We're all bandits and cannot see one another smile. I try to smile with my eyes, but when I wear sunglasses, I make my voice extra cheerful because we are all doing the best we can in the worst of times. Uh, hmm. Sipping champagne in my pajamas at three in the afternoon, I ask myself, self, is this the worst of times? Or the most of the times. <laughs> yeah, that's nice. Thank you. <laughs> Gotta normalize some of the weird stuff we're doing these days. Right. <laughs> I liked the no. last, I thought my favorite line in that poem was going to be the bandit part until you got to the sipping champagne in your pajamas. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm glad it took a little humor at the end 
<laughs> I think you need a poem about that, how you got to three o'clock champagne hour. What brought you to yeah. say, hey, this is what I do now. <laughs> Every every day is happy hour, Tracy, at your house, huh? Yeah, pretty much. Actually, it's um, we're happy. We're hey, you know, whatever. <laughs> well, you're whatever a writer. You have to do you're to get through to the day. Long, you're used to doing long periods of being by yourself just to write. I am. So, My third book is coming out soon. Congratulations! Oh, exciting. Thank you, Agnes. You feeling up to reading something? Sure. Uh, the, the haiku community definitely rallied around the idea of writing through the COVID times. Um, there's groups that sprung up that are just sharing COVID-related haiku. And in fact, there's already a book published um, via Lulu <laughs> called of COVID-19. So I'm, I'm in that anthology as well. Cool. So I'll read... Uh, I'll read all the poems that I submitted to it. It's just, I think, seven total. Um, and two of them made it into that anthology. So that was pretty cool. Um, I'll read my seven little haiku. Can you guys hear me okay? Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah. Great. Great, okay. More than I've ever known about the habits of Blue Jays work from home. More than I've ever known about the habits of Blue Jays Work from home. Mm. Quiet neighborhood. A car in every driveway on a weekday. Quiet neighborhood. A car in every driveway on a weekday. Anywhere in the My lap. Anywhere in the house. Cat in my lap. They're just so thrilled that I suddenly am home all the time. That they're like, we're going to make sure you stay. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Easter bunny declared essential. Scanter baskets. Easter bunny declared essential. Scanter baskets. Pandemic. The dog's warmth spreads up through my feet. Pandemic. The dog's warmth spreads up through my feet. Turning lemons into cocktails. Quarantini. <laughs> Turning lemons into cocktails. Quarantini. <laughs> Introvert. Did anything change under lockdown? Introvert, did anything change under lockdown? That's it. Thank you. Those are great. I like them. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Quarantine. Really good. I always, hilarious. always love your hi haikus. <laughs> Thank you. Nadine, you said you had a second poem you were thinking about reading, maybe? I do have another uh, pandemic poem. I'd love to hear it. Okay. It's called Panic in a Pandemic. Panic in a pandemic. The world is in crisis. Widespread fear is ruler of many. Violence and hatred seem unending. Lives are destroyed in a state of confusion. Looking for answers that no one knows. The world is in pandemic and doors are closed. People are dying, sickness everywhere. An unseen enemy waging war. What's happening today, never seen before. Hugging, kissing, standing too close. The human touch can pass it on. Social distancing has become the norm. And the air we breathe can cause great harm. Wear a mask, cover your face, wash your hands, distance yourself. No one's immune and no one is safe. This pandemic does not discriminate. Isolation, desperation, what's to become of our world and nation? America was founded on the principles of God and our currency says, in God we trust. The words are there, but God is not first. America's behavior says I've forgotten about God. 
They've kicked them out of schools and out of their hearts. Racial tension, violence, and hate has marred the image of the United States. The world is watching as we lose control. Backbiting, hating, killing, police brutality is on the rise. Lawmakers in Congress on the divide. America, God says, open your eyes. Loving one another should be your goal. And God we trust should be America's way. And love should be your guide. When God becomes the standard, peace will abide. That was very nice. Very good. You didn't say any names, but we know that we know the gist. (laughs) Tracy, this is Paul. I've got a couple if you'd like. I would love it. Okay. The first one is entitled Passing Things. And it has a epigraph drawn from Ecclesiastes 1.4. A generation goes, a generation comes, but the earth remains forever. Passing things. The sun rises against its will, would choose the comfortable quilt of darkness over ineluctable morning. The earth turns. Obvious things, mentioned for the obviousness of things, the tiresome rote of days, yet beneath something different, something new, swelling, pulsing, throbbing like unsatisfied longing, hangover from a future held politely to the lips but not drunk, Something is passing away, disease, an order, a way of life, a dream. We will all survive this, we are told, some, not all. Jose Ameal survived the Spanish flu, 1918. He was four. From his bed, he peeked through drawn curtains, looked outside to watch the souls passing by, so many dead on the streets of Luarca in North Spain. Did he wonder if his turn would come? He lived to be imprisoned by Franco, bury his wife in 51, marry another and live 50 more good years. Something is passing away. We peek through drawn curtains at the procession of souls. We wonder if today our turn will come. Tomorrow the sun will rise, reluctant, as though choosing its darkling quilt over inevitable morning. The earth turns. I'm swooning over here. Wow. That's beautiful. I'm stupefied. (laughs) So well written. Good job. You have got to submit that somewhere, Paul. Okay. Thank you. I'll (laughs) give it a shot. (laughs) That was very beautiful. Um, The historical narrative is so special. Yeah, absolutely. You You have another one? your Your comment about Googling Spanish flu um, that's exactly what I was doing. And I ran across this 2015 interview with Jose Ameal, who was at that point, I don't know, um, maybe 102 or 103 years old. Wow. And he, he'd been married to his first wife, who died in 1951, but married to his second wife for 50 some odd years. Wow. Um, yeah, it was just, and, and he made this comment about watching through the wor- the curtains of his window. He would stand up in his bed and watch through the curtains of his window as they drew the the, the procession of 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 um, caskets down the street to be buried in the cemetery. Well, it made me also think of my uncle Henry, who just died a few years ago. He was 103 when he died, and he he was here in America, but he was he was born in 11. 
in 2011. So he was about seven years old, I think, when it finally hit the United States. And, Mm -hmm. you know, lived through all that. And there was nothing to, they had nothing to really stop it. You just, you either, like you said, you either made it or you didn't. Not all will survive this. And then I was thinking of Darwin. It put me into Darwin and natural selection and like the weak are winning out. But in this, it's not the weak that are winning out. Sometimes it's not the weak. You know, it's yep. random. I'm I'm nodding and I'm realizing you can't see me nodding. So I'm telling you <laughs> that I'm over here nodding. <laughs> here, here's another one entitled Yellow Flag. And it might help to know that during the great outbreaks of cholera in, in history, it was the practice that a <laughs> ship on, which, on board which cholera had broken out would fly a yellow flag as it approached a port. And that allowed the people in the port to decide whether or not to allow the ship to dock. So yellow flag. And maybe yellow fever too. Because my my on my on my mother grandmother's side, they she didn't land it in New Orleans because they had had uh, New Orleans because they had a yellow fever outbreak, so they ended up going to Grant to Galveston instead, and that's the only reason she didn't they didn't disembark in New Orleans because of a yellow fever outbreak. So that's even in our flag. history book. So uh, yeah, Melanie, yellow flag. I think Paul is about to read a poem. Oh, okay. I want to hear another one. Yeah, here he goes. Yellow flag. Raise the yellow flag that marks disease. This lonely ship will not soon come to rest in port of comforting communion or cease to sail. We birth on isolation's breast and pray for peace, though at a frightening cost we'd have been wiser not to pay. The rest you know. Too many years like waves have tossed us to and fro to break now with the lie. Tis only till we're finally across this yawning chasm, this darkening divide that makes us a society of strangers closeted till viruses subside. And then, shall we then brave the dangers that drift malevolent like random microbes or evil humors, insults, sudden angers in the daily current, twill not be so. This boat's no recent shelter. Here's the tragedy. We booked our passage on it long ago. Social distance is the commended remedy for illnesses that take their mortal toll. But social distance is also the malady that keeps the body well, but kills the soul. Oh, I love that last line. Chills up my spine. Yeah, I love that. It's like the sacrifice of mental health for the good of the public and physical health, right? Yeah. Well, it, it makes well, me think of your poem about um, your own sense of isolation, um, Iris, that you were you read a few minutes ago. Mm. Yeah. Here's another uh, one. Last one, one really quick one, um, in a slightly more um, well lighthearted vein. <laughs> this one is entitled "But I'm Not Sick." But I'm not sick. I have a little virus, or rather, it has me, and time will tell if all be well, as well as well can be. Who knows if it's corona? No test kits to be found. Yet symptoms three are plain to see. I wear them like a crown. Cough, fatigue, and fever afflict me dawn and dusk. No one comes round this breathing ground, but turns in pure disgust and fear of my contagion, and flees the sight pathetic. In voices hushed, they say I must be sealed in place, hermetic. Farewell, fair weather friends. Keep vigil against the germ. And I, ascetic, 
will wax poetic the rest of this sad term. I bid you, though, consider, need we such harsh precaution? For I affirm, affliction's worms political exhaustion. I feel, like, I feel like doing like the snapping, clapping stuff. <laughs> That's what I find awesome Touche. This one is a little longer, but if you're willing. Entitled, The Twelve Days of Distancing. On the first day of distancing, my true love said to me, Dear, won't you go for a walk? On the second day of distancing, my true love said to me, Must you wear that T-shirt? And dear, won't you go for a walk? <laughs> On the third day of distancing, my true love said to me, please take a shower. Must you wear that t-shirt? And dear, won't you go for a walk? <laughs> On the fourth day of distancing, my true love said to me, are those day old undies? Please take a shower. Must you wear that t-shirt? And dear, won't you go for a walk? <laughs> On the fifth day of distancing, my true love said to me, when will you shave? Are those day-old undies? Please take a shower. Must you wear that T-shirt? And dear, won't you go for a walk? On the sixth day of distancing, my true love said to me, Stop stealing the covers. When will you shave? Are those day-old undies? Please take a shower. Must you wear that T-shirt? And dear, won't you go for a walk? On the seventh day of distancing, my true love said to me, Close your mouth when chewing. Stop stealing the covers. When will you shave? Are those day-old undies? Please take a shower. Must you wear that T-shirt? And dear, won't you go for a walk? On the eighth day of distancing, my true love said to me, you will drive me crazy. Close your mouth when chewing. Stop stealing the covers. When will you shave? Are those day-old undies? Please take a shower. Must you wear that T-shirt? And dear, won't you go for a walk? On the ninth day, day of distancing, my true love said to me, please sleep in the guest room. You will drive me crazy. Close your mouth when chewing. Stop stealing the covers. When will you shave? Are those day old undies? Please take a shower. Must you wear that t-shirt? And dear, won't you go for a walk? On the 10th day of distancing, my true love said to me, I can't. I just can't. Please sleep in the guest room. You will drive me crazy. Close your mouth when chewing. Stop stealing the covers. When will you shave? Are those day-old undies? Please take a shower. Must you wear that T-shirt? And dear, won't you go for a walk? On the 11th day of distancing, my true love said to me, I'm going to the psychiatrist. I can't. I just can't. Please sleep in the guest room. You will drive me crazy. Close your mouth when chewing. Stop stealing the covers. When will you shave? Are those day-old undies? Please take a shower. Must you wear that T-shirt? And dear, won't you go for a walk? On the twelfth day of distancing, my true love said to me, Wait, dear? Dear? <laughs> <laughs> Oops. That was wonderful. Hey, that was hilarious. Yeah, very funny. That's yeah. good. It's a good parody. That's perfect. <laughs> but it's so true. <laughs> Just get out of the house, will you? <laughs> that is funny. It's Especially funny, coming like, from you, Paul. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're all having this common experience, but somehow hearing the, you know, the common experience sort of enumerated, it just is so validating, you know, like, yes, <laughs> please go for a walk right now. <laughs> Some aspects of that poem are true. <laughs> I have one that's not about the pandemic. Read it. It's called unspoken. Unspoken words, thoughts, and emotions reside in the heart and mind with the potential to love, encourage, and inspire, or to kill, steal, and destroy. Words not yet manifested and released into the universe. Your thoughts and words can be transferred from the mind and heart and spoken 
but it's up to you to choose whether for blessing, uplifting, love, or encouragement. Only you have the power to hold back and reject the unspoken that will release hurt, hatred, confusion, detriment, and even death to the hearers. Words have power, life and death power. The tongue is a vehicle. It is like a fire, a world of wrong occupying its place in our bodies. Unspoken, what's inside that no one yet knows until it is released? Unspoken, words that should be said or words that should be rejected. Unspoken, words that edify or destroy, allowing the unspoken to become spoken words of love will benefit those who listen and change their world. Someone is waiting for the unspoken to be spoken. Words of love never said, never heard. Someone is waiting for you to release the unspoken that can only come from you. Very nice. Lovely. Very nice. I'm seeing us in a Venn diagram, and in the middle, we're hmm. all writers. We're all writers, and we overlap. All different voices. It's yep. Words are very important to all of us. We are writers. We are poets. Words, words are extremely important. Some of the most important things of all. Yeah. Power of the word. The power, yes. It's magical. They are. They're magical. You know, a poem is a incantation. I don't know. We cast a, we bring people into our emotions or our minds. We share our experience. And um, yeah, it, it's, it's magic. It's a cryptic web of thought, emotion, and language. Um, I'm sticking my tongue out at you. It's entitled now. Blue Eyed Snake. What in the world is a blue-eyed snake, a sign that things are surely changing, that what is old is sloughing off, not yet replaced by something new? It's hard to know just where you're going when you can't see just where you are. Snakes shed their skin. It's how things are. It must be hard to be a snake. About the time you get things going, your eyes grow dim and things start changing. You have no choice. You face the new, blind as a bat. The first thing off is eyelid skin. Before it's off, it turns opaque, and your eyes are useless and blue. It's nothing new, unless you don't know you're a snake, can't understand why things are changing, can't see which way the world is going. I can't help wondering if what's going on with us is not far off from snakes whose skin is always changing. How vulnerable it seems we are to fear of change. Like a snake, reflexively we hiss at new threats perceived though unseen, new phantoms in the fog going past in the dark. A shedding snake will strike at you to warn you off. I have a sense that's how we are these days. Life is always changing. New people keep arriving, changing settled ways, demanding new accommodations in how we are used to speaking, used to going about our days. Something's off, we think, and learn to strike like snakes. We're holed up like a blue-eyed snake. The old skin's changing. Take it off. We need new skin where we are going. Snaps and clap. Right. Yes, that's good. That was yes. really, I, I'm, I'm amazed at your writing tonight, Paul. Well, yeah, you're, you. just, you're just killing it in captivity over there. <laughs> right, is that a way of saying I should stay out of the public view? <laughs> no, no. I can't see any of y'all. So y'all are just a disembodied voices of, of, of humor and, and insight and 
and good spirits, and uh, it's just so wonderful to talk to everyone tonight. Yeah, thank I, you. I have an assignment for you for whenever we're able to get together again, if it's a month from now okay. or six weeks or two months, whatever, you know, works out. Okay. Um, the assignment is write an ode. Hmm. Write an ode. And it can be an ode to something big and magnificent, or it could be an ode to fuzzy socks. It could be an ode to anything. So, um, yeah, have fun with it. Okay. Right. Wonderful.